sure you are social distancing as well. Yes, when you say hi to your friends, we know it might be a while. It has been a while it's been since you've seen them, so you know the elbow, elbow like that. Like Let's show them. They can't see well, our the feet. Well, the foot. You can't but see our feet, our feet. But the foot. Oh, the maybe like a fist pump, but not really maybe a high five because you know that's like germs. Elbow bump is good. Don't hug. I know no. you want to hug. I'm a hugger. I want to hug. But you can't because it's illegal. So just an elbow bump. Make sure you distance from your friends. We'll be having coffee on sale on the night. Someone will tell you more about that later. But when you're drinking your coffee, take a step back. Pick your mask off. Take a sip. Come back. No, put the mask on first. Yeah, please put the mask, put the mask on, on first, first. And then, come, and then back. come back. Or just like, you know, turn around do the whole thing. Don't like take it off and sip, then like chat because COVID spreads like that. COVID spreads like and that. in between the drinking of coffee and the chats and everything else, make sure to sanitize your hands. There'll be sanitizers around. You can bring your own set. Oh, they're already here. You're already here. We hope you brought your, in your own handbag. I know the sanitizer, so put it so on. So make sure to use it. If you aren't already, make sure you are following us on social media, whether you're young adult or part of youth, rivers.youth or rivers underscore young adults. Make sure you're following us so you can keep up to date with what's happening at youth and youth and youth and young adults. So make sure you're following us. We'll see you online. Hey everyone, hey everybody. what's happening? What's cracker lacking? Today is Tuesday. It is Tuesday like indeed. When you see this video, it might not be Tuesday. It might be a Friday. It might be a Friday, but you know what day is coming? Sunday. 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 What happens on Sunday? Sunday, we've got Sunday Night Connect in the Zoom. In the Zoom indeed. After the 5 p.m. service and you want to be there. What happens at Sunday Connect? So on a Sunday Connect, we just get to connect with each other online and you get to build community in this COVID area. <laughs> Era. Okay. Um, season. Uh, which area? Season, season, season. Okay. Season. The book right. community in this COVID season. That's the word you were looking for. Yes. In this era, area, season. Season. You fill in the gap. But um, don't we don't want to fill in the spot though. So we want to see you in Sunday Connect at 6.30. At 6.30. Make sure that you invite someone. Yes. That is the most invite important thing. Invite a friend, thing. which is important so that you're not there alone. That's right. And we'll see you there. Thank if you, you are there coming. alone, you'll make friends. That's true. Lifelong friendships. Yes. And maybe partnerships. We'll see you there. On Sunday. Hey everyone. Hey guys. So excited that you joined us today. We just wanted to remind you that you can still invite someone. So what must they do to invite someone? You can copy the link of whatever platform you are watching on. Uh, and you can pop them a WhatsApp message or a Telegram or whatever you do these days. That's but true. just send them the link. Yes, it's send important. them the link so that they can join you. And also, if they join you, you can chat to them in the comments and just be super, super responsive. Because, you know, we're a community, we're working together. So make sure that you engage. <laughs> <laughs> make sure that you engage with us in the comments below. <laughs> Talking, talking, okay? Anyways, we'll see you in the comments below. See you there. Below. See you on the other side. Hey. Hi, everyone. No, Tato, <laughs> come on. The level of energy no, is just not No, we're excited. Real. I'm excited. No, this is a public service announcement. For That's your, true. For your health. For your health and your safety, because even though we get to meet in person, COVID is still real. It exists still. It hasn't left. No. So you need to make sure you stay safe by wearing a mask. Correct. Like this. Don't let your nose out, don't be that person, it's weird. Or don't let anything out. If whatever's <laughs> don't like your chin either. Don't let your chin out. Just let it cover your, your face, half what? of your face. Yeah. No, it's not really half, it's just this just wear a mask. <laughs> and wear it well. Now let's say you arrive at church and you want to say how's it to your boots. Yeah. Don't high five them. No. Don't handshake them. No. Something like, hey Tata, how you doing? <laughs> Something like that. That's a perfectly acceptable greeting. That's what? Also, <laughs> it's acceptable. Sanitize. Clean yourself. Shower before you come and to true. youth. And then sanitize. Wash with that. soap also. If we you're spoke at about youth this. right now and you're watching this yeah. and you haven't showered, go home and shower, please. And then come back or next week. And then sanitize your hands, but also wash them with soap. Wash them with soap, sanitize. We have bathrooms with soap, so you can go <laughs> wash it in there if you and haven't showered. Sanitizing yet. stations. We do. They are these things. They look like this. But just stay safe, okay? <laughs> We should have bought a sanitizing station for the purposes of this. It's okay, but you know what to do. And I think that's the end of our health and safety announcement. Stay safe, stay wise, and keep hope alive. And, and 
drink, keep your mask oh, on. Oh yeah, if you're drinking coffee, keep your mask on. No, that's stupid. <laughs> Just turn around. Okay, okay if you want someone. I have someone. a cup of coffee. I want to drink it. Turn around also. He also oh, didn't turn around. That was lovely coffee. You need to have another sip. Exactly like that. Don't be that person that drinks in front of people. No, that's rude. And then you want to talk. Also, if you're drinking coffee, don't talk because then... <laughs> I still have my coffee. I still have my coffee in my hand. Okay, hi everyone. Hey everyone. Hi. Um, we just want to say if you have any prayer requests, submit them. Yes. To our Instagram page, our website, because we really, really, really would love to pray for you. We'd love to pray with you, but also share with us your, your praise reports because yeah. we'd really love to celebrate with you as well. Yes, so please share. We'd like to keep connecting with you so you can submit those on the website. DM them to us, just send them to us so we can make sure that we're celebrating and praying with you. Another way you can share with us is to follow us on social media. Yes. So you can follow us at rivers.youth or at rivers underscore young adults. That's right. So make sure you follow us and talk to us because we'd love to connect with you. Peace. Hey guys, why not join us for Sunday Connect this Sunday night, the day after tomorrow, whenever you're watching this, whatever. Just join us on Sunday night, 7 p.m.? 6.30 p.m. because if you arrive at 7 you might be very late and we close the gates at 15 minutes afterwards so don't be late but join us on Sunday night uh, it's a great time to connect with people you might meet new friends you might meet your life partner you never know so just join us be there it's fun we play games make new friends have a grand old time see ya hey everyone welcome to youth and young adults we're so glad you've joined us tonight we just wanted to tell you something right now. You can share this link. That's right. Share this link with some people in your world. Make sure that they don't miss out on tonight. Yes, invite a friend or That's an enemy. True. You can invite them too. It doesn't matter who it is. You can invite anybody. You can send a broadcast. You can post the link onto your social media. That's right. Twitter it. Twitter it? I think it's Facebook tweeted. Facebook it. Tweeters. <laughs> Tweeters. Yeah. Do whatever you can do. Do what do, you need to do. Link. Yes, do what you exactly. Need to do. Yeah. And then when they join us, you can connect with them in the comments. That's right. Make sure you are lighting up them comments. And if you invite someone and they don't join us, you can connect with us in the comments. That's right. We'll be in the comments connecting with you. With you, yes. And hopefully they'll join us next time. Yeah. So we can all connect. Why together. not connect right now? Send us a message. Say hi. Tell us your name. Hi. Or your friend's name. <laughs> Just send a random name.
Oh man, I love Friday Night Lives. I literally look love forward it. to it for the whole week. Guys, it's so good to see you all. Welcome in the building online. We are so glad that you're here. And if you're joining us online, why not let us know where you're joining us from? Yes, I'd love to know whether it's from Durban, maybe it's overseas, maybe it's from Centurion, that's also a different country. <laughs> um, but wherever you're from, let us know. But also, why not, if you're here for, if you're here for the first time, send us an emoji in the comments. I like this emoji, emoji today. It's like, hey, what's happening? It may be the fist bump as well. Yeah. Fist bump. Is I there, is there I a, don't think there's an elbow one. one. I don't there's know. Do you know what there is? There's the dab. Is there a dab? Yes. But, but you know what there is? There's this one also. So maybe send us this one. I don't know, something. I don't know, but just let us know that you're here. We are so happy that you're yes. here. And yes. later on tonight, we will let you know what you can do if you're here for the first time. Awesome. But right now, we're going to go into a time of worship. Yes, that's right. And worship is a time where we get to connect with God, where we yep. get to put distractions aside. So at home, if you're seated, why not stand up? Come let's on. surrender our hearts and let's just remind ourselves of God's goodness and yes. His incredible love for us. Awesome. Good evening, youth and young adults. Let's sing. I was searching for something, something I knew was there but couldn't see. I remember the moment when the one I was searching for found me. I can't make sense of it, no getting over it. How much love changed everything? All cause I know. surrender our whole hearts to you. Thank you for all you do for us.
find me now Where the grace runs as deep as your scars You pull me from the clay You set me on a rock You call me by your name You made my heart whole again Lift it
Father God, but you know every little thing about us, Father. And on that, Lord, you know what is hurting our hearts. You know what is burdening us. You know what is keeping us down, Lord. You know what's making us tired. And Father, I just thank you that you're such a personal God and you want to meet our every single need. And so tonight, for anybody who's feeling heartbroken, who's feeling lonely, who's feeling rejected, Father, I just pray for your incredible sense of hope in those situations. I thank you that you're a God of love who wants to fill every single area of our lives where there is lack, where there is a, a distance that we're feeling. Father, I really just pray that you would ignite your presence in people's lives, Father. Father, I specifically pray for people who have lost family members, specifically lost moms as we go into Mother's Day, Lord. It's sometimes such a hard weekend. And Lord, you know the pain that it is when when people have lost mothers or grandmothers or people who are like mothers to them. And Father, I just pray for your comfort, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray for your incredibly powerful presence just to surround people, surround their hearts, Lord. And for any other need, Lord God, where the people are struggling with finances. Yes, it's been a tough year, Lord God, but thank you that you are a God who is a provider. Thank you, Lord, that you're a healer. Thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you that you're there for us in every single area of our lives. We just pray for exams that might be coming up. We pray for studies that even though we lost a year last year, thank you, God, that you're in control, that you're going to honor our hard work, that you're going to just see us through, Lord God. And we just thank you that you're a God who does miracles. You're a God who loves us. You're a God who is powerful. You are mighty. You call us by your name, Lord God. And I just pray for every single person in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Man, how exciting is it to be here tonight, whether we are in the building or online, we see you. Yes, we do, we do. We see you even though we don't really see you, Yeah. but we see all of you here. And so why don't you give someone like a little elbow, it might be a Bluetooth elbow. I'm giving you guys at home a Bluetooth elbow. Yes, we are. You can give real elbows, that's cool. Yes, that Just is cool. Just make sure we socially, socially distance. distance, please. And then once you have said hello, you can take, take your, your seats. seats. And at home as well, if you were standing, you are welcome to sit down. Exactly. If you're even finishing your chips, just sit down. I know when we were online, we used to really get comfortable. Yes. But I'm so glad to be in the building. Yes, it is so incredible to be in the building, especially if you are here for your first time. Yes. Whether it's here in the building physically or online, we love having first time yes. visitors. And we love connecting with you. So if you're in the building on the sides of the walls, there are QR, QR codes and we'd love for you to just snap your phone. You say snap it. Snap, snap scan, a pic, scan it. Yeah. Uh, we don't Snapchat, it's snap scan, right? Yes, just that's checking. the one. And you can get that on the QR codes. But if you're at home, we'd love to know who you are. We'd love to get to know you. And so underneath the YouTube video, the YouTube stream, you'll be able to find a visitor's um, link and we'd love to connect with you. Yes, that's right. Guys, come on, let's give a very warm welcome to all our first time visitors. Woohoo! Awesome. Now, Cam, do you have the Rivers Church app? I actually do have the app, and I used it. I used it recently. Did yes. you? What I did you use it, it for? I used it to book my Centurion service. Girl. I mean, it was so cool. I just went there, it's logged so in. It's so convenient, and right? And then you get there, and then you scan, and I'm just and like, you're done. wow. That's it. Wow, and it's wow. so convenient. But guess what? That is not the only thing that you can use the Rivers Church app for. Really? But that's all I'm going to say for now. So if you don't have the app, Firstly, why? Come on. But it's okay. This is a judgment-free zone. Is it? But this is your <laughs> chance 
to now download the Rivers Church yes. app. So make sure you download it. That's all I'm going to say. Make sure you fill out your details also. Yes. Don't skip your birthday. You know, sometimes when you're filling out things. You mustn't like, do that. Don't do that. Fill it out properly. And that's all I'm going to say for I'm now. also just going to say yeah. that. And so why not, if you don't have data for that, just hotspot someone. Just be like, I need the app. Hotspot me, man. Even yeah. though Some people have unlimited data. Have I'm like, ever? who are you? <laughs> who are you? Have you ever? Well, with that said, we are now going to go into a time of worship where Keenan is going to encourage us with our giving. But while we do that, let's take a look at the screen as we see the ways to give. Online giving is super easy. We have a whole bunch of ways that we can give. Why not head straight to SnapScan and scan either the youth or young adult QR code. Or the Rivers app, where you can tap giving at the bottom of the screen, then select the amount and it will take you over to SnapScan. Don't forget to select youth or young adults from the drop down menu. If you want to give by credit card or EFT, you can just head to our website. Good evening, youth and young adults. Are you guys excited to give? Yeah. Online, are you guys excited to give? Yeah. We'll see. You can say you're excited over there. But tonight is my incredible privilege to encourage all of us around our giving. And in doing so, I want to take you to a story that a lot of us know, especially as Christians. Jesus went to the cross as a perfect man, died on the cross for our sins. Then he was in the tomb for three days. Then he rose again, like he said he would. So we all know that part. The next part, we all know Jesus goes to his disciples and a whole lot of things happens. But on the other side of that, there were a couple of guys, some guards, who were in charge of guarding Jesus' tomb. So they were hired by pretty much Jesus' enemies, the guys responsible for taking Jesus to the cross. They were called the chief priests. And these guards went to the chief priests and said, listen, I know we were supposed to be guarding Jesus, but he's gone now. Like he rose from the dead like he said he would. Now the chief priests are panicking, they're like, we can't have this because then people are going to turn against us. It's going to be bad news. So here's what's going to happen. You can read the full story in the book of Matthew. The reference will come up. Um, but they say to the guards, they say, listen, we're going to give you a large sum of money. That's what the Bible says. To go out into the city and say, in the middle of the night, some of Jesus' disciples came and stole his body. And that's what happened. That's why he's not there anymore. So they were willing to fund a lie. And if you look around today, if you look on Netflix, if you scroll down on Instagram and social media, there's a lot of lies being spread and people are not scared to fund those lies. Lies like there is no God. Lies like Jesus isn't real or Jesus is bigoted or lies like the Bible's old fashioned or doesn't speak the truth. Those lies are being funded by so many people, even celebrities we follow. Those lies are being funded. The question I have to ask today, ask Christians, are we willing to fund the truth? The truth is Jesus was a real historical figure. Jesus came down as God's only son. He died on the cross for each one of us. Whether you believe in him or not, he died for you. He rose again to reconcile us to God and he lives for us right now in our hearts and he wants to do the best for us. That's the truth. So as Christians, I think it's time we need to step up. We need to stop sitting back and just getting comfortable with our lives, but actually step up and say, listen, I'm gonna start funding the truth. I'm gonna make sure that this message of the gospel gets out, gets online, gets into my schools, gets into my varsity and gets fully behind that. And I understand we're in the middle of a pandemic. I know some of you teenagers, your parents have lost their jobs. I know as young adults, you might have started a business but had to quit it because we're in difficult times. I understand that. But God will never ask you to give what you don't have. Each one of us, no matter how big or how small, can make a sacrifice towards God's kingdom to build his house and to spread this truth and to make the truth go viral. Because it's time that we start seeing the truth and the good news going viral instead of cat videos or irrelevant things. So I want to encourage every single one of us today, I say every one of us, whether you're online, whether you're in the building, we need to take a stand today and decide, listen, I'm going to start prioritizing God, prioritizing His church, prioritizing the kingdom, and make a sacrifice in my life to give towards Him. There's an incredible scripture in 1 Chronicles, and this is King David saying this, and now how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? Who is willing to fund the truth today? Who is willing to build God's church on this earth? I'm ready. If you guys are ready, you can raise your hands. You can raise your hands in the comments. And we're going to get behind this. So if you're in the building, you can scan the code on the side of the walls. If you're watching online, there's some details on the screen at the bottom. We can all give together. You saw the video earlier. Download SnapScan. Download the Rivers app. And let's start making a difference. And let's start spreading the good news of God into every corner of the world and helping people to know who Jesus is. So if you're ready for that, we're going to lift our hands and we're going to pray. You guys can stand up with me. 
at home, why not sign up as well? Put the popcorn down and we're gonna pray together. Father God, thank you for every single person in the building and online tonight, Lord Jesus, who's willing to fund the truth, Father God, who's willing to build into your kingdom, Lord Jesus. I pray for incredible blessing in their lives, Lord Dad, that you make yourself known to them, Lord Jesus. Help them to prioritize you in your kingdom so that we can see the truth going viral, the truth going out into all corners of the earth, Father God. I pray for every single giver tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. You guys can take a seat if you're in the building and online. Now, as you mentioned earlier, it's Mother's Day and Sunday. Some of you are like, I didn't know, and now you're trying to panic. It's too late for Net Florist. Like, they're not going to deliver now, so go to a shop. But with that, we're going to give you some tips on a gift you can get for your mom. So take a look at the video. Oof. Yo, I've been ah. such a good husband, you can't remember. A pair of socks. With, you know with the little grippies at the bottom? Yeah, those are the ones. You know when you go to bounce and you get those ones that stick to the floor? Yeah. Guys, that's really, really hard. Yeah, but it's also from our children. It's not just because you used to say to me, I'm not your mother. So when we first got married, he, he, he bought me Mother's Day gifts. And then later on, he got cheeky and then said, I'm not going to buy you a gift this year because you are not my mother. I have a mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grown man. Oh gosh, I can't remember, but I do think sometime back I may have bought like pots or pans or something for the house when I was newly married and I thought she'd really appreciate that and she was like, what's this? You know, then I learned, okay, you've got to buy feminine things on mother's that pajamas, perfumes, soaps or you slippers. know, slippers, things like that. I think the probably the worst one I got her was bedroom slippers. They were like fluffy and she hated them, they were hideous. I don't, I've never seen her use them. She now uses something different. But I also don't sleep there anymore. I sleep somewhere else, so I'm on her bedroom. <laughs> a pair of socks. Yeah, that's coming up this weekend, so I hope she's not watching. <laughs> what a terrible gift. <laughs> so I got a, a dustbin. And it was a damaged dustbin. So it wasn't even like a good quality. It had dents and scratches, and so I'm pretty confident my husband got it discounted because of the damage, and that was my gift. It's what every woman wants on Mother's Day. No, all she ever wants is a Woolies voucher. Actually, geez, I, I, I don't know. My mom has never told me that I've ever given her anything that she didn't enjoy or she didn't like. I think even if, even if, even if I gave her something that she didn't like, she would have probably been like, oh, this is so wonderful. My wife, on the other hand. <laughs> I know she doesn't like purple, so? One year I bought her like a bunch of really purple flowers and yeah, they didn't last very long. I'm a really good, good gift buyer though. I got her a DVD that I wanted to watch. <laughs> it was a Beyonce one. <laughs> Once I tried to give my mom flowers for Mother's Day and she thought I was stealing sweets. So she came outside and shouted at me and then I took the flowers from behind my back and I showed her flowers and then I cried. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't know. Cheeky as he was, he still buys me Mother's Day gifts. I mean, she was blessed with me at birth. I mean, what, what more could you want? Quick, <laughs> 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 what is the worst gift? She, she was blessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this weekend. Well, hello, everybody. You guys good? You guys good online? Let us know in the comments. Just a friendly reminder that it is Mother's Day on Sunday. And if you don't have a gift, those are terrible examples of gifts to get. Don't use any of them. I know Stuart's here and he got his mom socks on Sunday. Stu, I hope your mom's not watching. Um, otherwise, it'd be awkward. But are you excited to be here? Okay, well, like, like three people are excited here. Are you excited to be here? Let us know in the comments if you're excited to be here. Maybe you want to let us know in the comments what the worst Mother's Day gift you got was. I'm not sure who it was in the comments, but they said they owe their mom a gift from last year that they're giving their mom this year. COVID. Someone is saying COVID is the reason why. But if you live with your mother, I don't think you can use COVID as the reason. No. So you did let us know what it is, but um, we're going to go into the message. I know Keenan prayed for the message uh, when he prayed for offering, and we've been doing an unofficial series. 
It's because it wasn't planned to be a series. It just happened to be a series. But we've been following a nautical theme. And somebody was like, Chris, what does nautical mean? It's like sailing, I think. Probably should have looked up the definition before. And the first week of the series we looked at, let us know in the comments if you remember, because nobody in the building remembers. Jonah was last week. Wow. Peter, and we looked at the three boats of Peter's life. Last week we looked at, and this week we're going to take a look at a man who started life in an ark, so to speak. Why don't you let us know in the comments if you think you know who we're speaking about. The person who started their life in an ark. Daniel says Moses, some people say Noah. We're going to find out now, because I wasn't expecting Daniel to guess Moses correctly. But it is Moses. And um, if you're unsure as to why Moses started his life in an ark, we'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, But Moses, the story of Moses is found in the movie, The Ten Commandments. It's a classic. It's an epic. It's also found in the the movie, The Prince of Egypt. Anybody watch that? Listen, I grew up in that movie. And what was the other one? The Prince of Dreams. Joseph and the Prince of Dreams. Not Prince of Jeans. The Prince of Dreams. And... um, those are like some versions of Moses' story, but we're going to take a look at the Bible and, and understand what actually happened. It's always a good place to start. And Moses was born at an interesting time. What happened was um, there was a man named Joseph who had lots of dreams, and eventually he was second in command in Egypt, and then his family moved into Egypt, and uh, his family took what God said in the Bible when they said, be fruitful and multiply very seriously. So much so that they were almost, the Bible says that Pharaoh, who was the ruler at the time, he didn't know what had happened before, he got so scared of the amount of people, he thought that they were gonna overthrow the Egyptians. That's how many kids this family had. They didn't have TV back in the day, right? And what ends up happening is he basically says to them, Pharaoh says, listen, I'm gonna put you guys in slavery. So the Israelites end up in slavery, but that's still not enough. He gets scared, so he starts doing something crazy. He tells the midwives, other people who, who help women give birth, when the baby comes out, if it's a boy, you need to kill the baby. If it's a woman, you can let the baby live because they were scared that the Israelites were going to have an army that were going to overthrow the Egyptians. And the reason I'm telling you this is they obviously watched the movie Wonder Woman and they, were, they, they, they weren't scared of the woman, they were scared of the men. But what the midwife said was, the Bible that tells us this, they were more fearful of God than Pharaoh. So what they did was, they basically protected all the Israelite babies. So, so, so Pharaoh gets desperate, so he says, cool, this is what I'm going to do. Take a look what it says in Exodus 1. It says, the, then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Let me say all. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. And this verse happens right before we're introduced to the birth of Moses, which we're going to read which you're gonna read now, actually, which is found in Exodus 2. But that's the, that's the times in which Moses was born. Crazy, right? And take a look at what Exodus 2 says. It says this, Now, a man of the tribe of Levi, this is Moses' dad, married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, I know that almost seems like, well, imagine he has a baby, and what do you think of Chris as a kid? Oh, he's fine. He's a fine kid. He was a fine child. We're going to look at that word a little bit later. Um, she hid him for, for, um, for three months, but when she, could hi- when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Now we're going to take a look at the message now, but are you going to be responsive? Yeah. Are you going to lean in? If you're watching online, are you going to be responsive? If I tell you the title, before I walked up, I got a a DM on Instagram. It's a call for me. I don't really get DMs very often. Thanks. My wife is saying good. Well, I got a DM from Pastor Andre. He just wanted me to let you know that he's watching, that he's being responsive at home. And aren't you grateful for a senior pastor that watches you, that plays a part in everything that we're doing? So Pastor Andre, Pastor Moore watching, so... Hi, Pastor Andre. Hi, Pastor Vilma. I'll be good tonight. Like I'll behave. The title of your message is this, Basket Case. 
We're going to take a look at a basket case in the Bible, and we're going to take a look at what we can learn from the Scripture and the life of Moses. You see, Moses is significant because we're going to flash forward. We're not going to, uh, we're only going to look at the first three to two years of his life. But Moses goes on to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Many of us will be familiar with this story. God speaks to him. He, what, what ends up happening is he actually runs away from the palace because he was an adopted son in the palace. And he spends 40 years in the wilderness. He's a shepherd. Then God speaks to him in a burning bush. Okay, that's, that's freaky, right? Then after God speaks to him in a burning bush, he goes, he goes back to Egypt. He tells Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, no. And then 10 plagues. Anybody familiar with this? Frogs, the river turned to blood. There's a whole bunch, locusts. Eventually, Pharaoh, after 10 plagues, says, listen, you've taken the firstborn of all of the people in Israel, in Egypt. Go on. So they leave. They go. And then they get to the Red Sea. Then Moses hits the Red Sea with his staff, and then it opens. And then they cut straight through the traffic. Then they get to the other side, and here's the cool part is, Egypt was an established nation, Israelites were slaves. And because of what Moses did, they actually defeated the Israelite army because all of them were trying to follow the Israelites. And then the bridge came down, so to speak, and it covered them in water. And then the Israelites get to the promised land, eventually, 40 years later, Moses never actually steps into the promised land. But here's something that's really interesting is that Moses got to see the promised one who was Jesus because at the Mount of Transfiguration in the New Testament, Moses is standing there with Jesus. How many of you know, if you're gonna stand next to Jesus at one of the most important points of his ministry, you are an important person in the Bible. Do you know what I mean? Like, it could have been anyone. It could have been Enoch. Some of you are like, who's Enoch? The Bible says Enoch, he was there, and then he wasn't there. The Bible said God wanted him to be in heaven, so he just, can you imagine that? I wonder what he was doing the moment before he ended up in heaven. Imagine he was making coffee. Do you know that first coffee in the morning? And then you can smell it. And he goes, I would be happy to see Jesus, but I just asked, like, you couldn't wait for me to finish my coffee. You see, there's many people in the Bible who could have filled that role, but God chose Moses. And because God chose Moses, there's somebody that we can learn from. He was a righteous man. He was given the Ten Commandments. A lot of the fundamental moral principles that we live by as Christians is because of the laws of Moses that are found in the Bible. So we're going to flash back right to the start of Moses' life, and we're first going to learn from Moses' parents. Before I give you point number one, there's a scripture in Hebrews, and let's take a look at what it says. By faith, Moses' parents, everyone say Moses' parents. Moses' mother and father hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. He was more than just fine, okay? And they were not afraid of the king's edict. So that means the king's rule. Your first point is this, is we need to live by faith. We need to act in faith. We need to make sure that as we go through life, we are living a life that is activated by the faith that we have in God. The Bible doesn't say that by chance, Moses ended up in Pharaoh's daughter's house. The irony of that is pretty amazing. It doesn't say, well, what happened was Moses' parents, they didn't know what to do with him, and so God sent down a basket, and then they they jumped in the basket, and then that's what ended up happening. No, 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 no. The Bible tells us that Moses was born, and because Moses was born and Moses' parents acted in faith, Moses got to where he was. Moses' parents, by acting in faith, played a part in the salvation of not just Moses' life, but a whole nation. And it started by them acting in faith. You can read about it in Exodus 2, but don't you find that pretty amazing? And you know what's interesting is, remember I read the context, and the context is important, with Exodus 1 verse 22? and then they had to act in faith. They knew what Pharaoh had said, yet they were still willing to obey God. What do I mean? God said, be fruitful and multiply. 
because the king was killing, was killing children, because Pharaoh was killing children, it didn't stop them from acting in faith. So often what we need to realize is we need to fear God more than we fear people. We need to be willing to be obedient to God, to trust God. You see, they were obedient to the call to be fruitful and multiply. You know, I'll never forget the one day I was, I, I mean, uh, it must have been three or four years ago, I, I've had the privilege of traveling with Pastor Andre. We're preaching in a church in Cape Town. And we were, we were getting driven to, the, um, to, to where, he was, where, where he was speaking. And I asked Pastor Andre, I said, Pastor Andre, you've been in ministry for many years. What's the one thing, the one piece of advice that you, you would give to, to, to stay the course? And I'll never forget, he turned to me and he said this. He said, every decision that I make, every campus that I plant, everything that I do, I remind myself that I have to stand in front of God and give an account of what I had to do. Normally I write stuff down, that has been burned into my brain because it's some of the best advice that I've ever heard. Here's my question. Do we think that when we make decisions? Do we sometimes forget that God sees? Do we think that God sees on Friday and on Sunday, but Monday to Thursday is open gates and you can do what you want? Or do we understand that there's a God that is watching and we have to give an account of our life? Yeah. Well, perhaps the flip side is actually more true for you and I. Maybe you're sitting here, maybe you're watching online, maybe in the gallery, maybe you're under the gallery. And maybe for you, we're actually more comfortable with standing in front of God with our sin than people with our sin. We've gotten too familiar, we've gotten too, we use grace as a crutch, and we've gotten too familiar with just saying, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just this way, and this is how I am. Or do, are we willing to say, actually, I'm not going to stand in front of God and not give an account and not take responsibility for my life. So many people get caught up in an addiction, and whatever that addiction is, you don't want to show it to people, right? You tend to hide it. But we, 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 we spend more time trying to not do it in front of people, but more comfortable doing it in front of God. Here's what we need to do is we need to understand that God, He's a loving, merciful Father right from Genesis to Revelation, from the start of creation to 2021. But He is also a just and fair God. And we should never get too familiar in His presence. Instead, we need to act according to who God is in our life. Is this helping anyone? Do you know what the second thing about acting in faith is? Is we need to trust God's character. When I read that scripture, God didn't tell Moses' parents to build a basket. Am I right? We can go back to it. The Bible doesn't say that Moses' parents prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights until they heard from God. The Bible says they had Moses. Then they hid Moses. And then when they couldn't hide Moses anymore, they built a basket and put Moses in the basket. You see, they were willing to trust the character of God, act out and step out of faith based on who God was and his goodness in life. And because of who God was, they acted, they built, and they stepped forward. So many of us, we stand here and we act based on, well, I'm praying for something to happen. And God's like, I've given you so many opportunities. Why don't you stand up, put some hard work in it? Because the Bible always measures things. It doesn't just say, hey, God's gonna pour everything on your lap. Moses' parents didn't pray for a basket and it just popped up there. You see, we need to be willing to not just say that we have faith, but the Bible tells us that faith without deeds is dead. Instead, what we need to do is we need to be willing to trust God and we need to be willing to know his character. The problem is we don't know the character of God. Do you want to know how you look to God? Do you look at his word? You know, you want to look at the, who, who is Jesus? Open his word. He's the word made flesh. Therefore, if you want to understand who Jesus is, you've got to open the word of God and it gives you an understanding of the character of God. Is this helping anyone? And when we learn to act in faith, unusual things happen. Often we read this story and we think it's a cool story, but I, I need you to pause. Understand what's happening. So the Pharaoh, I'm going to say Pharaoh, Pharaoh, is killing babies. You don't have to repeat that. That's a cruel thing to do. It's an inhumane thing to do. And then Moses' parents build a basket, put Moses in it after hiding him, 
they put him on the river, right? Do you know where Moses ends up? Take a look what it says in Exodus 2 verse 7. Then his sister, so, sorry, before I read this, let me give you, he, he, he sails up to Pharaoh's house. The same Pharaoh who was saying, you need to kill all the Israelite children. That's whose house. That's where ways took him. <laughs> Exodus 2, it says, then his sister, Moses' sister, asked Pharaoh's daughter, because Moses ended up at Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. So Pharaoh is the one who made this law. Moses ends up in Pharaoh's house, found by Pharaoh's daughter, who when she opens the basket has pity on the baby and then he ends up back where he belonged. You see, when we begin to trust God and act out in faith, even when it seems so unlikely, even when it seems like we're heading in the wrong direction, that God can't do anything, what ends up happening is God will work all things together for the good of those who love Him. Not only will God work all things together for good, but Moses' mom got paid for being a mom. Like, let that sink in. She was an Israelite slave. Pharaoh's daughter could have said, do this for me. And she would have had to say, yes. But instead, Pharaoh's daughter says, please, would you do this? And I'll pay you. God found a way to bless her, even when the circumstances were trying. And even beyond that, more than just the blessing that she got, her son would be the one who would step up and lead the Israelites out of slavery, out of bad habits, into the promised land. And all she had to do was step out and act in faith. So my question as we come to a close in this point is, what do we need to act out in faith on? Just like Moses' mom and dad. And can we just pause and it's Mother's Day on Sunday. Moses' mother played such an important part in Moses' life. And that's why it's so important to celebrate a thing like Mother's Day, to show honor where honor is due. And maybe you don't have the best relationship with your mom. Still show honor because the Bible, one of the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses was honor your father and mother. Not based on their performance, not based on how good they are to you, but we need to step up and we need to be willing to honor. Is this helping anyone? Yeah. You ready for point number two? Yeah. Point number two is my favorite point. It's this, ordinary is overrated. Amen. Ordinary is overrated. Remember in Hebrews 11, it said she saw that he was no ordinary child. God uses the unusual people. Then the New Living Translation said that his mom saw that he was a unusual child. Maybe God's trying to use you, but you're too busy trying to be usual. You're too busy trying to be ordinary and fit in to be like everybody else out there with the same clothes for the same people, use the same hashtag. And God's like, why don't you try to be ordinary? Why don't you try being extraordinary? Anybody like superhero movies? Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, whatever other man, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, Black Panther. Do you know what every single superhero has in common? They don't fit in. We don't like, oh man, I love Ordinary Man. He's my favorite superhero. Or wonderfully average woman. Anybody ever wanted to be a superhero? Anybody try jumping off the roof? Guys, I'm still waiting for my letter from Hogwarts. I'm not even kidding. I used to go check the mailbox. When I have kids, I'm going to write them a letter just so that they, you know. But you know what the thing is, is we all want to be special. We all want to be unique. Until we get the opportunity to step out and do exactly what God wants us to do. But just like Superman and Spider-Man and Batman and Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel and Black Panther and the new Captain America and the Winter Soldier and all of them. 
there's a cost attached. And when we understand that ordinary is overrated, we need to realize that there's a cost attached for you and I. And the cost that's attached for us is righteousness. We need to live life right in order that God would bless us. You see, the problem is instead of trying to be righteous, we try to be relevant. And our relevance, there's nothing wrong with being relevant. If you want to dress nicely, you want to watch the latest movies, go for it. The only problem is when we become relevant at the, at the expense of righteousness. When fitting in becomes more important than doing what's right. You see, for Moses, what he ended up doing, why he ran away from Egypt, was instead of fitting in with the Egyptians, he saw that the Egyptian was beating an, an Israelite, so he stepped in and he said, I'm not gonna settle for this. Are we willing to say, hey, this is the right way to live. God's called me to a higher standard. I know my friends at school are doing something, but it's not the God thing that he wants me to do. Because if every superhero fitted in, they wouldn't be superheroes. And like I said, as much as there's nothing wrong with relevance, the Bible also gives us a sobering reminder in 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 to 18. I'm reading from the message paraphrase. It's a paraphrased version of the Bible. Um, but I like the way that the wording is said here. It says, do not become partnered partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership out of wrong and right? That's not a partnership, that's war. The Bible actually says, what do good and evil have in common? It says, is light's best friends, best friends with dark? Does Christ go uh, strolling with the devil? Sure. Strolling. They see me strolling. They hate. Do trust and mistrust hold hands? Who would think of setting up a pagan idols in God's holy temple? But that's exactly what we are. Each of us, a temple in whom God lives. Do you want to know what makes you extraordinary? It's not how much you can lift at the gym. It's not how fast you can run down a track. It's a fact that God's spirit is in each and every single one of us. And because God is, God's spirit is in us, we will not be ordinary. We will not be average. Instead, we will step out. We will trust God and say, I don't want to be ordinary. I'm going to pay the price to live an extraordinary life. And just because everybody's doing something doesn't mean that I need to do that. Just because everybody's hashtagging something doesn't mean that I need to do that. I'm going to get my life aligned with the Word of God. You ready for point number three? What was point number one? Have faith. Act in faith. Point number two. Point number three is this. Be a basket case. I'm going to explain what that means in a second. We need to be a basket case. And Exodus 2 verse 3 says this about Moses and mom. But when she could hide him no longer... She got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. We leave that scripture up. Moses' mom and dad built this basket for him, right? Made out of papyrus and tar and pitch. And when we read the word basket, we think, you know when you go to the shops? You know when you get older and you go to the shops by yourself, it's different? You see, when I was younger, I'd take a trolley. When you have to pay your own bills, all of a sudden that basket looks way more appealing. Okay, if you're still in high school, you ride that trolley as long as you can ride that trolley. And you know the basket, that's what we think of, that's the size. But you know the Bible, in the Hebrew, the word for basket is actually an ark. You see, and it's not similar with one of Moses' ancestors named Noah, who built an ark. And in the Bible, the ark is a picture of the church. And I think in the life of Moses, the same principle applies. Do you want to be a basket case? It means staying in the house of God, staying in church, trusting God, uh, despite what everything looks like. Because the fact of the matter is, for Moses, in the basket was the safest place to be. Outside of the basket was trouble, 
was destruction, was pain, was the risk of death. But if he stayed in the basket, he was safe and protected. I mean, you're gonna write this down, stay in the basket. As we go through a pandemic, as we go through life, it's so easy to wanna jump out the basket. You know, the Bible tells us that, that Noah's, Moses' sister stood at the shore and watched. She was stationed. That's a good thing. She was making sure that Moses would end up in good hands. And this is why I'm, I think that Waze wasn't invented yet. Because if Moses' mom had set the basket up, put in ways where the basket was going, and she saw the end destination, she would have never let the basket go. Let's be honest. If she knew that Moses was gonna end up in Pharaoh's house, the enemy, the one who was trying to kill him in the first place, she would have never let him go. If Moses' sister was swimming with it alongside her and he saw going into, Moses, into Pharaoh's house, she would have just pushed it along like, oh, nothing to see here. You see, what we need to do is when we get in the basket, we need to trust the direction in which God is sending us. Even when it makes us feel uncomfortable, even when we get a little bit itchy and hot under the collar and we don't know which way to turn or which direction to go, we need to trust the way that God is taking us. Did you know that as a Christian, you have lots of responsibilities, but you know what the most important responsibility is? In fact, it'll save you a lot of time and effort and trouble. One word, submission. You know what happens when you put a baby in the basket? It doesn't get its own way. It doesn't choose the direction which it goes. Oh man, that seems unfashionable. I wanna head over there. That's where it's happening. When we trust God, when we put our lives in the basket that is the church, that is God's people, what God begins to do is direct us in a way that we could never direct ourselves. And he will take us to some of the most unlikely places. Because if Moses' family never let the basket go, Israel wouldn't have had a savior back then. Like, think about it. Like, actually think about it. They would never have had a savior because if Moses survived but lived in an Israelite's house, he would have never grown up in Pharaoh's house. He wouldn't have been able to infiltrate politics. He wouldn't have been able to change a nation. He wouldn't have ended up in a desert rediscovering who he was outside of his possessions and his pride and everything that he thought was important. If it wasn't for letting him go, putting him in the basket, we might not be here today. Because from Moses' bloodline comes a man named Jesus. And like Moses' mom and dad let him go on the river in a basket, a little mini ark. It's like one of those little remote control G-wagons for Moses. In the same way, God the Father put his one and only son on the river of life. And he became the savior for you and I, except he was without sin. And he paid the price that you and I deserve to pay so that we might have eternal life. We could go from slaves to sin to free in Christ. But it takes making a decision. And today we have the opportunity, we have the decision to jump in the basket, jump in the ark. And when you do that, life doesn't become perfect. Life still happens. Trouble still happens. Pain still happens. But we have a Savior who's doing life with us. So if that's you here today, maybe you're in the building, maybe you're watching online, you're not here by accident. God's not surprised that you're here. He's like, oh my gosh. God wasn't surprised when Moses ended up on the water. Oh no. Oh no, he's going towards Pharaoh's house. How are we gonna make this work? God does everything by plan. And he planned for you to be here, planned for you to be watching online, planned for you to be watching this on YouTube maybe a couple weeks later. But God wants to have a real and meaningful relationship with you. He wants to walk this thing called life with you and we have to make the decision to say yes. Never forget that Moses ran away for 40 years and had to come back. And maybe you walked away from God. Not like you, you had a bad week, but like you, you legitimately have withdrawn from God as a result of COVID, as a result of life. And you find yourself here today watching this wherever you're watching it and God's saying, hey, 
Say yes to me because I want to change your life. I've paid the price for you to sail this journey called life with the blood of Jesus. So if that's you and you're one of those two groups of people, every eye closed, every head bowed in the building, maybe you're watching online and you just wanna raise your hands in an attitude of surrender, you can do that. If you're in the building, why not raise your hand so I can see your hand, I can include you. Pray, I see that hand, that's such an amazing decision that you're making. I see those hands at the top in the gallery, that's amazing. I see that hand on the floor, I see that hand under the gallery. Man, hands going up everywhere. I might not be able to see your hand, but God sees your heart if you're watching online. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say a prayer. And if you're in the building, you're watching online, why not repeat the words of this prayer after me? We're all gonna pray together like this. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Today, I invite you into my life. I make Jesus the Lord and Savior. Change me, take the guilt and shame and give me hope and your future. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You see, the reason that those people are clapping is because you just made a, a decision that can change your eternity. Whether you're watching online or you're watching in the building. So we wanna help you journey with that. So if you're watching online, you can click under the video. If you're in the building, there's gonna be a, a QR code that with the info, the same one as earlier. You can scan that. You can come chat to one of the leaders after the service. But man, don't let this be the last time you come back. Come back on Sunday for the weekend services. Uh, Pastor Andre has got an amazing series that he's been doing. The Habits of Highly Miserable People. Some of us didn't realize how miserable we are until we watched last week. Like, But also... Send us a DM, maybe. We want to journey with you as a, as a family. We don't just want you to watch online and then disappear. Watch online, connect with us, read the Bible, pray. You see, all of these things are part of being in the ark. Because what happens is when you go from, from death to life, when you go from slaves to sin to free in Christ, you become born again. Jesus tried to explain this to a man named Nicodemus and he was confused. But basically your old life is gone and you come up a new creation. And that's the decision, that's what's starting here. But what you've got to do is you've got to choose. Another way of looking at it, it's like planting a seed. Anybody ever planted a seed in the ground? Do you know when you plant a seed in the ground, the seed dies? Spoiler alert. But when it dies, new life is formed in the form of a tree. And what we do is when we plant our lives in God's kingdom, in God's house, how old life falls away and we are made a new creation to something that bears fruit and something different. But the best part is you don't have to do it alone. So click on that link, let us know, send us a DM, do whatever you need to do. Do you guys enjoy it tonight? Yeah. Did you enjoy it in the comments? Thank you guys in the comments. Thank you guys who are speaking on behalf of the comments here. Well, thank you for joining us today. I uh, hope that you have uh, enjoyed the service. Don't forget to download the app. Like Candice and Sonke said, you don't want to miss out next week. That's all I'm saying. Do with that information what you need. Make sure you fill in all the information and um, make sure that as you head out here, you head out in an order, order, orderly fashion. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.